Welcome to Getting Started with JavaFX Embedded on the Raspberry Pi. I'm Lisa Selly, a software engineer at Oracle Corporation, and I'm going to walk you through getting your Raspberry Pi set up and running your first JavaFX Embedded application on it. First, I'm going to talk briefly about JavaFX Embedded, what exactly is JavaFX Embedded. Then I'm going to talk about the system requirements for your host and your client machine. I'm going to go through the setup of your host machine, the setup of your Raspberry Pi, and then we're going to talk about how to run a JavaFX embedded application on the Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to show you where you can get more information about it. So what is JavaFX embedded? It's a version of JavaFX that's targeted to run on smaller devices. Um, some of our target markets are smart home devices, medical devices, things of that nature. The Raspberry Pi is a very inexpensive ARM-based computer. It's mainly targeted at hobbyists who are interested in experimenting with embedded development. We chose this particular platform because it's widely available, it's very inexpensive, there's a lot of community support for it, and it has a full-fledged Linux distribution that's freely available for download. Your host system is going to be used to download the Linux distribution for the Raspberry Pi and create the SD card. Um, you can also use your host system to remotely connect to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. You can use your host system for developing applications for the Raspberry Pi. Because JDK 8 for ARM does contain the Java C compiler, it is possible to develop your Java applications directly on the Raspberry Pi, but that won't allow you to take advantage of, for example, an integrated development environment or scene builder or any of the tools that come with JavaFX. So it's not as convenient as developing on your desktop. Your client system requirements, we're using a Raspberry Pi Model B. You can see a picture of it over here on the right, and yes, it really does fit in the palm of your hand. You're going to need a Class 10 SD card, 4 gigabytes or larger, a Raspbian Linux distribution, JDK 8 for Linux ARM, a mini USB 5 volt 2 amp power adapter. It's also useful to have some input devices to use with your Raspberry Pi. If you are connecting USB input devices, we highly recommend you use a powered USB hub. We have seen some issues with, for example, a, an optical USB mouse hooked up to the Raspberry Pi without using a powered hub because it appears to steal a little bit too much power from the main board. You can connect um, a USB touch screen, and I'm going to show you a URL later where you can get a list of the touch screens that are supported that we've tested with and we know work. You can also use a normal external display if you don't have a touch screen. The Raspberry Pi will accept an HDMI input, so you'll either need an HDMI out display, or if you have a DVI display, you can get a DVI to HDMI adapter cable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and download the latest Raspbian distribution. I'm going to go to my Linux machine to do this. I'm going to open up a web browser. And I'm going to go to the latest Raspbian image, and I'm going to download the zip file. As you can see, this is quite a large file, and the download does take a long time. So in order to save time in this presentation, I've already downloaded and saved the image file to my desktop. You can see here I've got the Raspbian zip file. I've unzipped it, so now I have the .img file, and it's ready to go on my SD card. Now I'm going to plug my SD card into my desktop computer. I'm going to go ahead and mount it. I see my Linux desktop has mounted the partitions. I'm going to use the mount command to see where exactly my SD card got mounted. 
I see on my desktop it's at slash dev slash SDE1 and 2. The first thing I want to do is unmount those partitions so that I'll be able to write to them later. Now I'm going to use the DD command to copy the image file to the SD card. You want to make sure that, again, you're writing to the correct device and that you write to the entire device and not just the partition. So in my case, I'm going to write to slash dev slash SDE, not slash dev slash SDE1 or 2. Now, because the, the DD command will take several minutes to copy the entire image to the SD card, again, to save time, I'm not going to go through this whole step right now. I've already prepared an SD card that I'm going to use. After you've copied the image to the SD card, you want to sync and then unmount the card from your desktop. And now you can take it out, put it into the Raspberry Pi, and go ahead and boot up. The first time you boot your Raspberry Pi, it's going to boot into the Raspi config screen. Um, there are a couple important steps to take here. We're going to use Raspi config to expand the file system so that we're using the entire SD card. That will give you more room for installing the JDK8 and any applications later. We're going to set the memory split to 128, 128. The Raspberry Pi actually has 256 megs of RAM shared between the CPU and the GPU. We've done some experimentation and found that the 128-128 split gives the best results for running JavaFX embedded. We're also going to enable SSH server, and we're going to disable booting to desktop. We don't actually want to have Xwindows running when we're trying to run JavaFX embedded. So after you, go to, after you make these changes in Raspi Config, you're going to reboot your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go back to Linux desktop. And I'm going to actually use SSH to connect to my Raspberry Pi. Now you have a couple options for installing the JDK on your Raspberry Pi. You can actually use wget to install directly to your Raspberry Pi. Um, I prefer to download to my desktop machine, and I copy the JDK and any applications I want to run to a file system that I remotely mount on the Raspberry Pi. This makes it a little more flexible for me changing things around. So I'm going to mount my remote file system on my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to make sure that I'm root when I try to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the JDK8 download page. And I'm going to download the latest Linux ARM v6v7 DFP hard float ABI. It's the only Linux ARM choice available, so you can't really get it wrong. I'm going to save that to my desktop. Again, this can take a little while to download, so I've already done this. Um, I'm also going to download the JavaFX demos and samples to my desktop and save those as well. I'm going to unzip my samples, and when I unzip my samples, I'm going to see in that directory that I have three jar files. The only sample that's tested and blessed to run on JavaFX embedded is ensemble8.jar. So that's the one that we're going to run. I'm going to go to where my JDK is installed. And I just need to point at the jar file. And that's how I execute. Since I can't share my Raspberry Pi screen with you, 
I've actually taken a video of Ensemble 8 running on the Raspberry Pi, and I'll share that instead. So when you launch Ensemble 8, this is the screen that you're going to see, and you can actually see the scroll bar over here. There's quite a few more samples that are available. Um, Ensemble 8 is a large collection of sample programs that demonstrate a lot of the different capabilities that JavaFX Embedded has to offer. Um, the first sample I'm going to run is the path transition sample. It's a pretty simple one. And then I'll go back to the home screen. And I'll use the menu to select another sample, which is a graphics program called Bouncing Balls. This actually demonstrates, if you notice on the bottom of the screen, you can see the reflection of the bouncing balls. That's one of the many different effects that are available in JavaFX Embedded. And there you have it. You've just set up your Raspberry Pi and run your first JavaFX Embedded application on it. We have a lot of information about running JavaFX, JavaFX Embedded on the Raspberry Pi on this OpenJDK wiki. It contains a little more details about some of the things that we discussed in this slideshow and even a couple things that we didn't have time to touch on. So I encourage you to go there if you need to get more information about anything that I've talked about today. Thank you.